16 years after the original show aired its finale on Fox, That 90s Show picks up in Point Place, Wisconsin at Eric Foreman's old house where Kitty and Red are awaiting the arrival of their son, his wife Donna, and their granddaughter Leia. On this podcast, we like to review a recent installment of a different series every show. We're here to talk about the 30-minute pilot. Welcome to today's episode. So, we recorded this yesterday. Had about a 30-minute episode, and then we found out that our recording equipment went zoink. So... We're here to try to recreate that magic. However, probably won't have the same energy. <laughs> and given that we both know our, each other's thoughts on it, we might not have the same, like, I don't know, uh, insight as well. I did do a little bit more research, though. Great. Okay. So maybe we can start with that. Where is this show from? That 70s show, uh, like, late 2019, got onto Netflix, and then by the time it left in, like, September of 2020, it garnered a whole new audience. It's strange for me, because I remember when I was, like, in fifth grade, I, it was the first show that I ever watched every single episode to. To completion? Yeah. Even season eight? Uh, no, I, did, I skipped to the finale in season eight. Okay, so the first se- seven seasons, which is the official show, the, se- the eighth season is, like, widely considered, yeah, the, considered worst. the worst. And it, they don't even have all the cast, right? Yeah. Eric's not there. So, like, yeah, it's not really canon to me. But on YouTube, I remember they had all of the episodes. And if they didn't have the full episode, they would at least have it in segments. And then I remember I would also watch it on TV. ABC Family liked to play season seven episodes in general, but it was also being played on FX. But yeah, when I'm gone to Netflix in September of 2020. Well, actually, talk about your, like, favorite episodes so that, like, my favorite show episode, how much of a fan you are. Yeah, my favorite episode, in fact, is one of my favorite episodes of all time. Probably nostalgia bias a little bit, bit but it's season four, episode one. It's a wonderful life. It's like a dream episode where Eric has a dream and is met by an angel. And yeah, isn't I, the angel played by the neighbor in uh, what Seinfeld? It's played by the guy in Parks and Rec. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, got so, it. And yeah, yeah. So like, it's right after he broke up with Donna. It's a great episode. It was definitely my favorite when I first saw it. And uh, do you have a favorite episode? Um, it was been such a long time since I've seen the series. Um. I know some memorable episodes, like the one where they were all stuck in the Halloween thing, and then we find out, like, Fez's backstory. Oh, well, yeah, no, that was, yeah. Wasn't that, like, a pretty good episode? Yeah. There's the one where, like, uh, the parents get high? Yes, that was the season two premiere. Uh, okay. In fact, uh, Deborah Jo Rupp and Kurt Ward Smith had to, like, they were reacting to old episodes Mm -hmm. uh, in promotion for this, and that's That's one of the episodes that they reacted to. That would make sense. And then I know that they also switched the sister. I think the show was better before they switched the sister. Yeah, I think they switched the sister. Season season six. Season six, yeah. I'm pretty sure as well. All right, so you were saying, though, they put it on Netflix. It got really popular. And that's what caused Netflix to say, we're going to redo this. Nothing before that. Yeah. Like, that 70s show, they've been talking about comebacks since it left. Yeah. Like, when they ended it in 2006, I remember they threw some sort of, like, big party, right? Yeah, they it were, was a New Year's Eve party. No, no, no. What I mean, oh, you're, you <laughs> what mean... I mean is that the show actually threw a party for, like, the cast members, and they did, like, a big... Yeah, it happens It happens without every popular TV show, because I, I think this was, like, a flagship show. At yeah, the but time what was that out. called? It was called The Last ask goodbye that 70s show they did the same thing for things like friends and all those other shows exactly so that's what leads me to wonder why netflix needed that extra push from their their own fans to show that it would be popular i think it was uh, a mixture of a the cast not wanting to come back too soon Mm -hmm. and also b just like them having such different schedules because they all became famous from this thing i mean ashton kutcher during that 70s show literally had to shoot some of his season four episodes like in advance like when they were shooting season three because he was getting movie deals and then topher grace had like a rebound in his career a couple years ago with black klansman and black mirror and all other things yeah so i think it was just like a mixture of that perfect storm also even the secondary characters i remember they had or guest stars they'd have like elijah dushku who would later become famous you had the guy from buffy the vampire who also does like robot chicken what's his name all Um, right the guy from austin powers green seth green and then so yeah you'd have like people like that popping up but then in eighth season you had seth meyer's <laughs> brother right yeah did not become famous yeah actually what happened with that was they replaced him with the charlie character i think that was his name uh the guy who dies off the watch tower in season eight yes they replaced eric with that person because uh the critics and the fans really liked that character but then he was starring in a new tv show that so that's why they killed him off <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of stuff, and then obviously drama with Topher Grace and whether or not he would return even in that season. Yeah. 
Move to that 80s show, which starred Dennis from It's Always Sunny, and only lasted, I don't know, 10 episodes or something? Yeah. And I thought originally that that had Donna and... Or sorry, not Donna, but Kitty and Red in it. But you no. told me in the previous podcast mm-hmm. <laughs> that they did not. Yeah, it didn't. So, so I don't think it that had didn't any, have any connection. Any cast members. And now we're skipping to that 90s show, which... They are taking place 15 years after, and it is 16 years after, so so at least that sort of lines up. The two main things that I had walking away from this, though, if we're going to jump right into the pilot here, is that it wasn't a tale of two stories. Uh, the cynic in me told me that the, the old storyline, the old characters, that would be good. I would enjoy that. And the new characters, I would hate that. It would be bad. And it, it wasn't that way. Like, some of the old characters were a little, uh, I would say, rusty. The, the lines were a little dry. They did shake it off after a while. In fact, there are some of my favorite lines. Like Even Red delivers one of them when he says, uh, you're one of the um, upstairs people now. That, was, that probably got me laughing the most. And then the new characters, they weren't all that bad. Like the, I had three that I liked and three that I didn't. Unfortunately... Two of the three that I didn't like were like the main two. It was the girl who Leia and then her best friend. Those two, I felt like were overacting to the point of like it being a Disney show, like yeah. Zach and Cody. I can, um, I, I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but, but then we'll get into the rest of the characters in a second. The other point that I had to make is that where that 70s show, when it first was created, cast a bunch of, like, random people. Like, they were new people. I don't think Topher Grace had been in anything before that. And yeah, like you said, was, everybody got famous I from think it. He be, I think he was cast from, like, a high school play. At least I, that's how he started his career. So it was clearly said. about the 70s, though. Yes. It was constant references, the sets, the backgrounds, the personalities. But most importantly, the plot was centered around that lifestyle from the 70s that was so... It was such a big stereotype that um, the, that that's why it was called that. But in that 90s show, the only reason it's really called that 90s show is because it's bringing back a loved cast. Yeah. If you look at where it takes place, the setting, it's still the same house that's supposed to signify the 70s. They've only outlaid it with like a couple new posters and stuff. Maybe giving it like a little bit of a refurbishment. What I did but, find funny, yeah. What I did find funny about the basement, though, yeah. is that you know the couch that's in the, the couch basement? changed. Yeah, they, yeah or changed. reupholstered. No, it changed from the upstairs to the downstairs. That was the same couch from the original show, but they oh. put it downstairs. And also, Red's yeah. chair right next to the couch was also upstairs, and they put it downstairs. But it's the same pieces of furniture. Which and I could also see the Green Bay Packers helmet in the back. So like the small little details did work for me. I didn't mind the details or the background or even like the posters in the back it was just funny that they would use the same one when that was supposed to be like the archetype for it the actual like construction of that set was meant to portray a different era but they have to keep it to keep the fans and more importantly the actual show's focus is on this character development like the character now we can jump jump into the characters of these new kids are definitely ones that you could take out of this show and stick into any modern show and just stick them with like a smartphone. Absolutely. You know, yeah. like especially someone like Ozzy. You did not see a lot of characters like Ozzy in the in the 90s, right? Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of homophobia jokes that are home, homophobic jokes, but like I feel like they took the foreign kid and they knew that they had a weird voice with Fez and it worked with him and they were like, we're actually going to keep that. We know that you all think that we're going to scrap it, but we're going to keep it and we'll explain it by making him gay and snarky. And I don't think that that worked. Yeah, so, he was my least favorite character out of the bunch. However, I do have to say I was surprised to learn that he was 13 years old. The wow. rest of the cast, so you have you have uh, Leia and Gwen, they're 15. Then you have J. Kel, so he was the oldest. He's 18. I'm saying the actors. Yes. And then you had uh, Nikki, who was 17, uh, and then Nate, who was uh, 17 as well. And then, yeah, Fetz, who was 13. Yeah, but as we were talking about, though, Leia went... Okay, so the plot of the show is that Kitty and Red are in their house right and they're making sandwiches and they're dancing and they're enjoying life and that's when their kids pop by they or eric pops by with donna he's dropping off their granddaughter for like a day where they're just going to hang out and then they're going to go off to like space camp so he's still a nerd that's why she's named leia at one point she (laughs) even calls her like leia tatooine but that's not her real middle name and uh her her, the kitty is smelling eric's hair and it's all nostalgia they do concentrate on those uh, old characters for a while and yeah. I like that 
that was that was that was nice. The first the, scene was one of my favorite scenes of the whole show because I originally thought that they had just kind of retconned Donna's storyline because I remember in the eighth season she en ends up with like Seth Meyers brother or whatever. But no, it turns out yeah, it was heavily implied at the very end of last season when Eric came back uh, that they, that they realized the within the eighth season that it was a terrible <laughs> choice and so they like tried to reverse it all in the finale. No, okay, so they would have had to have a kid like right then and there. And later on, we find out a different couple in the show also mm -hmm. must have just had a kid about around that time because so Leia's that 15 year old and she wants to like uh, expand her friendships. And so she finds in Donna's old place next door, this other girl who's hanging out and having fun and dancing and has a bunch of 90s uh, posters of, of bands like the Go-Go's in the background. Her name is Gwen. And uh, like I said, she's kind of just playing the stereotypical cool best friend. And, um, I mean, I, I have, I see the potential there. I just didn't see this episode where the acting was there quite yet. Yeah. And when it comes to the other three, though, Nikki, Nate, and Jay, I think that's where the best part of the show, like, like Jay specifically was probably my favorite character. And you said he was your favorite character last time, not because he, he's just an Ashton Kutcher, like impersonator, yeah. but his timing was there. His jokes were effective, and his girlfriend was, to me, less annoying than Jackie was in the first season. Nikki, I thought, was a good choice. And then there's Nate. Is that his name? Yeah. Nate is ends up being Kelso's kid, but instead of acting like Kelso, to me, he acted like Joey from Friends. Yeah. Like, he, no, he was I... like, how you doing? You know, <laughs> that type of personality. He's also supposed to be technically smart. Like, he's... <laughs> But at the same time, still like a, a, a playboy? I don't know. It's weird. I thought that Nate got to play over the top. Yeah. Which was definitely like an easier role. But yeah, he was my favorite character. I even like And he's also joke. set up to be the love interest of Leia. So that by the end of the episode, she's like, I want to stay here. And then Topher Grace is like, well, I got to go. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite uh, parts, though, was actually with the, the, one of the scenes with all the kids where they get the beer keg and they just put it in the back and they didn't like have to show any form of idea or anything obviously a call back to the pilot episode oh. but that was but i did find out of like all the scenes with the new cast that to be the funniest that was yeah that was the introduction of nikki jay and nate but later on when they took the keg to uh <laughs> eric foreman's basement right or no was it somewhere else no it was there yeah it was there. yes and then they needed a tap i like this scene the least because they put what her they put like a balloon Un uh, underneath her underneath her pregnant. yeah and it wasn't the fact that she went to a store or a liquor store to purchase a tap it was the fact that um it she was so mean to the store owner and i know that they were trying to be like look she's growing into it she's making friends but yeah, like it, it didn't work it, it was my least favorite scene she's the, the same pilot. person who didn't even know what weed was by the end of the episode who was yeah. just nodding along with that and she's going to be standing up for herself in kind of a rude manner it's you told me she was 15 just now, right? Yeah. So I can't really, really criticize. Like, I, that's reserving judgment. I still gave the show a 6.5. I gave it a 6. I still gave it a passing that's grade. That's a passing grade, yeah. And as far as if you were to compare it from Velma Revival, that's of Scooby Doo, <laughs> yeah. to, let's say, Best Being Cobra Kai, where it, it, it's kind of in the middle group. Yes, I would yeah. agree. And, and so that's not bad. And I think they will sprinkle in more uh cameos you see that in the trailer for sure and then they play the trailer it was at the end. so odd how they played it at the end yeah. you would think it would at least be at the beginning or not there at all <laughs> yeah but by far to me the best scenes were when you did get to see our main character from the original show eric and uh he's there bonding with his his parents again and the, the only bittersweet thing is throughout the entire episode, I'm like, this is a one episode off. By the end, you'll come back at some point in the series, hopefully, like by episode 10 a couple times, because we saw Donna does at least. Mm -hmm. But um, he also has home economics and a bunch of other stuff that he's doing. But we didn't even get to see him hang out with the other returning couple. There was like literally a few seconds in between the time that they left. And then Ashton Kutcher and Myla Kunis popped in yeah, as Kelso and Jackie. I wasn't disappointed they popped in. Proving that they were not only Jay's father, but that they were married and getting married for a second and time. And that absolutely retcons the series. Not only because Jay Kelso is 18, and that's like kind of close to the age he's supposed to be playing there, but also uh, by the end of that 70s show, yeah. Myla Kunis is with Fez. Yeah, and, and Fez has like really grown into himself by the end of the eighth season. I remember they really tried to change his character 
character into a serious kind of role, right? Yeah. An adult, a mature adult. And then now he's going to be, what, a hairdresser? Yep. That's... Well, yeah, but I mean, like, he was a hairdresser throughout the series. I know, but this is supposed to be 15 <laughs> years later, and he was with Jackie, and now it's it's just interesting choices, and it makes it suck all the more that Danny Masterson kind of threw his career away he with was his the stupid oldest. decisions. When they, when they first started filming, he was the oldest, because I got the uh, old cast stage as well. He was 22 years old. Oh, yeah. And then That's... obviously, my, like, that makes me old. that makes me feel old because yeah obviously older than 22 at this point but yeah and then yeah my Kunis was obviously 15 but everyone knows the story like you were saying i was disappointed that ashton kutcher and my Kunis didn't have a scene with eric and donna because it just seemed like perfect placement and it kind of but it also like felt like the show was like we can't we can't yeah. give it to them quite yet we got to make sure that they have this like baiting thing going on in the background that being said it seemed like ashton kutcher i think was it seemed like he was almost happiest to come back like you could tell he he was was like really happy yeah he's been in so much like since and but not a lot lately he's been in two and a half men for a while and then he went on to be in the ranch and then he was in like movies again and and Mila kunis obviously has had a movie career but then since they got married it's or since they had kids i think They've just been hanging out in the back talking about how they don't like to shower or something. <laughs> you heard that story, right? Yeah. From like a long time ago where there was a debate whether or not you're supposed to use soap or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. So so the show's okay. And uh, I would say if you're a fan of the original, check it out. It's definitely better than the eighth season. Um, and uh, are you looking forward to seeing like the Cheech and Chong guy? Yeah, no, I was really glad to see him in the trailer. But then again, the one of the one of the things I was sad about was that they gave so much away. Like I, I won't say a lot. They had but, to though, because they knew that otherwise people wouldn't tune in. Yeah, but like the reason why this gets a six out of ten from me is because it was able to muster out just enough nostalgia. Like had this just been a regular TV show, I would have been like, absolutely not. I probably wouldn't even be watching the rest of the series. But because of that, I kind of feel the same way I do about the iCarly revival, where it's like, yeah, I might watch some episodes, I might skip through some. Um, but it's definitely not a show that I think is going to match the original in any way. Yeah. I wonder if people would consider it better than like the Arrested Development comeback, but I don't think so. I think Arrested Development came back with its original cast and it had the writing and stuff. And it, though people don't like that fourth season very much, I, I, I think it would still surpass this. However, I also want to add on to my previous point about that 70s show or the 90s show being titled the 90s show and how it really doesn't matter. If you look at their hairstyles, the whole point of their hairstyles originally was so that it would be part of that 70s, but now they just kept them. Like, everybody's got the exact same hair. <laughs> no, everybody. Now that no, I'm thinking about it. No, it when, red, yeah, <laughs> titty. <laughs> no, but the, the second they opened up and I saw that Tover Grace was still wearing that wig, yeah. it, it, it brought back memories, so it was I really like, couldn't complain. It was like both seeing someone old old but like completely looking exactly like yeah. themselves it is yeah it's as if like your best friend from uh, years ago showed up and you immediately recognized them based on their hairstyle and you just noticed a bunch of wrinkles <laughs> you were just like well this guy didn't change very much uh, the reviews for the show yeah. have been kind of mixed that's 6.7 on imdb with about a thousand or seven thousand reviews and then on Rotten tomatoes it does have a tomato it has 74 percent Critic score, audience score, 75%. The consensus hey. saying that, you know, it's serviceable, but that it still kind of needs to find its footing. Admit it, when you first heard that it was coming back, you cringed a little bit, right? I like cringed that was... a little bit, and I also really cringed when I saw the teaser because they did not show the old cast returning. And Which I thought was, it was smart. I thought it was just going to be Kitty and Red, and yeah. I was like, oh no. But then, like, when they actually released the trailer, it was the top one on YouTube, and so it yeah. kind of gave it away. But... Um, yeah, so that you said the the overall thing has been generally positive. Yeah, for example, like CNN said, the focus ultimately is on the kids. They are the weak links, but went on to praise the return of the old cast. And then Rolling Stone said the new kids are largely forgettable. While that 70s show was never a great comedy, it's young ensemble. Wait, what? Pretty <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> That's such an underhanded thing. Was never a great comedy? Yeah, they but they said that the that the uh, ensemble cast was one of the reasons why it worked. I, I don't. Wow. Just, I don't agree. I also remember episodes. having thought about the like for a while. What other episodes stood out? The egg episode, right, where Kelso had yes, to take care right. of an egg, <laughs> Jackie's egg. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it, there, there were definitely funny moments to me. I just have to just. And Luke Wilson was in there for a while. Yes, playing. a little bit of a storyline there. I remember a couple episodes. And sure. And you have Gail Mancusco. She directed the first eight episodes of this season. Uh, actually, Laura Previn is going to be directing the last two episodes of this season. Neat. But yeah, who did the pilot episode here? They've worked on 
every single comedy ever made. 30 Rock Scrubs, Just Shoot Me Friends, Modern Family Turner and Hooch, Home Economics, just to name a few. So obviously they got someone who knew that they were doing here. They, it's going to be 10 episodes. It was filmed at Sunset Bronson Studio, Los Angeles, California, in front of a live studio audience, much like that 70s show was. All right. Well, I think we should just call it and say, since we, we've done everything, we've talked about the reviews at length, even in our previous ones. So I, thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye.